Hello, everybody. My name is Curtis Johnson. I am the president of Managed by Stats. I am joined over here uh, with, uh, I'm, wow, good, right? Good start. Boom. This is uh, Mark Jepson. He is the COO of Managed by Stats. So uh, between the two of us, you know, we we tend to handle a lot of the uh, the training that you guys see from Managed by Stats. Um, since I'm sure a lot of you guys are probably new to Managed by Stats, um, you know, we're a all in one uh, platform of tools for Amazon sellers. Um, we've recently been expanding a lot for wholesalers, like a lot of the guys that are joining us on here live. Um, we've been working pretty closely with Dylan to build out some some new tools for you guys, uh, as I'm sure a lot of you guys use the retriever extension. Um, in, in addition to that, there are a ton of different tools that we're, we're excited to be able to introduce you to and uh, really give you an understanding of what we are able to add to what you guys are doing, help make what you're doing a lot easier. Um, we also have uh, a number of services. We have a PPC agency that uh, Mark is uh, definitely one of the main guys that uh, you know pushes that thing forward. So uh, it's a hybrid agency mixed between artificial intelligence and uh, human guided. So we, we have a lot of things that we can do to help you guys. So um, this training specifically, we do a lot of um, training. Some of them are about how to use Managed by Stats specifically. This one is going to cover a lot more on really ranking. And I am going to definitely let Mark do most of the talking on this um, so you kind of get an idea. Mark is a veteran seller, has two um, very successful brands, also been working with Managed by Stats for what, it's probably close to five years now? uh maybe six five or yeah. six years yeah yep. six years so definitely someone who's seen the front and back end of amazon quite a lot so someone you'll be able to learn a lot from so in terms of ranking we're going to talk about trifecta but for that again um, I'm going to let Mark cover the bulk of that. So I'm going to slide it on over to you. Sounds good. Hey guys. So, um, yeah, so we basically, we're talking to Dylan and, uh, we covered this, uh, slightly on the last webinar we did with him, but we wanted to cover some of the tools that you could take advantage of once you are using a uh, retriever to find these potential products to, uh, to reach out to those, uh, uh, owners or brand owners or, or product owners and become a authorized seller or a, you know, dedicated seller for them. And uh, so there's some of the things that uh, he thought was kind of nice um, with some of the tools that we have that help you kind of get that edge uh, for when you do that proposal or when you contact that person uh, to help you kind of have that, you know, foot in the door of how you can actually get them to agree to get you that product. So wanted to show you um, some of the ways that uh, we would kind of look at that in the tools that we have here. And uh, we can, of course, answer any questions on the way, but this is sort of a um, uh, overview of a process that we uh, like to coin as the trifecta. And um, it's basically a three, three step process that um, if you do it right, it can um, get you a, a nice foot in the door. So let's dive right in. Um, I think my screen is being shared. Yeah. Yeah. Screen share Perfect. is going. Okay, cool. So um, yeah, we just take this uh, bike multi-tool. Um, and if we go and use the retriever uh, tool, I have it uh, preloaded here so we can see all these guys not good. This one right here is uh, good. It passes the test. We can see you know, the, the different uh, estimated profit and revenue share. Um, so let's just take this as an example. Uh, you of course will do your own research and, and kind of filter out, down into what you wanna look for, but we'll just take this one um, for uh, speed's sake. So I'm just now, gonna... Mark. I don't hope you don't mind. I'm just going to cut in really quick. One thing, also, guys, sure. if you, if what he's using on Retriever is new to you, I know that Dylan, we just did a right. recording of a, a training on this stuff. What was it? Uh, last week? Yeah, I probably think so. last Thursday, yep. right? So if if this is new to you, what he's showing you on this screen here, um, definitely, I know that support can get it for you. Um, your guys' support wholesale formula. So um, I just wanted to make that little quick plug. Okay. Mark, rock and roll. Okay, sounds good. So we'll start over a little bit here. So um, the first thing we want to check, obviously, is the retriever tool. Um, a lot of you will already know about that. If you don't, um, you have a, a, a our retriever, MBS retriever extension. It's a Chrome extension. 
And you'll have, um, when you sign up through Dylan's access, you'll get this TWF feature added to this tool. And um, so this will basically very easily show you which products are passing that four point check. And, um, and then you can, of course, do your own research, uh, you know, have a bunch of them downloaded. Um, I think I can make this small over here. There we go. So you can download this data um, and then start going through and reaching out to your people. So let's just uh, take this as an example, just for uh, speed's sake, uh, this uh, iBeam tool right here. Just open that in a new tab. So this one is passing the test. So the first point of the trifecta is basically um, having a listing that is fully optimized and can actually get conversions. So for the aspect of what you're going to be doing when you reach out to a um, an owner of this product is you're going to want to show them that you have something that you can bring to the table that's going to make them willing to have you as a seller or as a dedicated seller or only, you know the only one uh, selling that product on Amazon. And so um, this tool basically can help you formulate that so you can have a nice presentation or have some good data to give to them and, uh, and, and go from there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna jump into manage by stats. And uh, this is, uh, if uh, some of you will be familiar with this, some of you won't. So when you get a manage by stats account, um, you'll have access to this whole catapult tab right here. And inside of it, you have this uh, tool called keyword scout. And that's the first one we're going to look at. And this is basically what's called a reverse ASIN tool, where it's going to be taking any ASIN that you put into the system. It's going to go and find which keywords that product is showing up for on Amazon, where it's ranking on them, um, and uh, kind of give you an insight into what that seller is uh, showing up for and how they're ranking for them. So here I just took that, that uh, exact product that I pulled up. And... Um, and then, sorry, here we go. Okay, so here's that exact product. I, th I threw it in here. And now we're gonna be able to see what keywords this product shows up for. So if I just take this and I do a quick little uh, sort on the search frequency rank column, this is basically Amazon's popularity or search volume uh, index. Uh, so they have it on a rank system, the lower the number, the better. And We'll let this sort really quick. All right, so here we go. So now we can see the lower the number, the better. So in this case, tools obviously is a very popular word. Uh, park tool, uh, bike tool kit, bike tire repair kit, etc. Right. So you have all these keywords that have a good search volume. And as we scroll down here, I'll just kind of cover this first uh, column, search volume. We can see that these these are all good search volume keywords. And I like to go down to about a million. Um, beyond that, beyond a million, you know that they either were in the top million before, or they're just a long tail version of something that is in the top million. So these are all, he's got about, I don't know, um, maybe a hundred or 60, something like that. Good keywords that are in this top area. So these are all keywords that we know the product is showing up for. So that's a good indicator. The second thing that we can look at is the ASIN position. So this is where it's ranking, um, you know, on which page is it ranking on? So if you think with, you know, 48 products on a page, let's just say 50 uh, to round it off, you know, this is 194. So he's on page, you know, uh, what, four or five. This one is on uh, position 19. So he's on page one, probably somewhere in the middle of page one, uh, number 22. So he's kind of like in the middle of page one, uh, 200. We know is on page four or five, et cetera. So this is a good way to go, okay, what keywords is this product showing up for? Uh, do they have these products in their listing uh, somewhere? Or how are they showing up for them? And if they're not showing up for these, these uh, keywords, you're gonna be able to use that as, as a tool of saying, hey, you're not showing up or you're not ranking for this vital keyword. Uh, you're not ranking too well. And I can do blah, blah, blah to help you get a better ranking. Um, so what the next step that I would do in this process to kind of give you some ammunition for this process is I would go and find similar products to this. And you want to see if there's other keywords, uh, as an example, you can see here, 800, uh, on the search volume, 16,000, 37,000, 55,000, and then it goes up from there. So there might be other words, uh, between, you know, in this area 
that he's not showing up for that he could show up for if they were uh, in his listing. Right now, we don't know which keywords those would be, but we can see if there are. <clears throat> One thing I'm going to interject here. Yeah. Um, we have someone asking, I noticed that search frequency rank is for the USA. Is there any way for it to work in the UK? Um, yes. So there's, there's right now it's only working in the USA. We are working on adding it to the other countries. Um, the caveat there is that, um, there is quite a bit, a bit of expense that goes into adding, uh, the other countries because we are doing a lot of, uh, backend work to get all those numbers and to be able to pull up that data for any and all, uh, products that are in that country. So um, right now we do have USA um, and there are other places where we do have the other country data as an example in uh, here in keyword tracker. Uh, if you have other countries, uh, UK, Germany, France, Italy, we have the search volume uh, details or the, the SFR details for those other countries. But for this tool here, this one is a bit more robust where it's actually going and checking the ranking for, our, for this particular, particular ASIN. Uh, and it's actually storing all that and, and tracking it all. So it's a bit of a more of an arduous process that we are working on adding soon. Yeah, it's really one of those things where we have to make sure that the, the volume, like no, no other country can really match the volume of the USA right. really is the short right. answer to that. Yeah, so that's uh, that. So what I want to do now is I want to go and look for other products similar to this. Um, a couple ways of doing this. Um, the easy way, which I, I don't advise, but it is an option to do, is you can just click this uh, little drop down arrow, and this will show you similar products that are showing up um, on page one uh, for this this keyword or the, these main keywords. So you could uh, click these and, and add them into your search, but I'm not gonna do that. I wanna show you uh, my preferred way of doing it. So what I would do is I'm gonna go to this thing, I'm gonna go uh, park tool, I have no idea what this is. So I'm just going to assume that this is probably <laughs> the, the primary keyword, but basically you want to go and, and search for the primary keyword. Uh, maybe that's uh, this one here, iBeam multi-tool. Right? I think that's probably the the key term there. Maybe Park, Park Tool is the brand. Yeah, okay. that, that's a iBeam multi-tool. Perfect. So there we go. So now we can do, now we have a, a search for that main keyword. That's the, the, the point is finding what the, what we like to call the root keyword, but it's just basically the, the keyword or the, the phrase that most appropriately um, uh, communicates that product, okay? Um, so in this case, um, what I wanna now do is I wanna search for the maybe five or 10 products that are gonna be in um, on page one, and in a, in a good state of, um, you know, of existence where basically we, we know that they have a lot of reviews, they have a good star rating, um, you know. <laughs> they have a good wind chime. They have a good wind chime. I don't know if that's me or someone else. Uh, you know, I don't know. There, Dana has like seven devices in here. So, okay. um, so we want to look for products that have uh, some good ratings because we know that they've either done their research, they've been around for, for a while, they've, they've uh, got keywords into their listing that we know are gonna be appropriate, right? So, um, and we wanna do uh, twofold. We wanna look for the, the kind of the best guys out there. And we also wanna look for uh, ones that are kind of up and coming. So what I like to do is I like to take a look at the, the first few products that are not sponsored. So here we have, uh, uh, this might be the same one. It's definitely Park Tool, which could be a brand, right? Yeah, I think that's the brand there is the Park Tool one. Okay. Let's uh, skip over those for a second. That Watto. Yeah, 16 Woto. and Woto. Multi-tool. Okay, good. Let's open that up. So I'm going to open this up in a new tab. These ones don't look good. Boop, boop, boop. Nope, nope, nope. Um, maybe this one, bike tools. It's kind of a multi-tool instead of, uh, you know, it might be that we're talking about a bike multi-tool here. I think that's what's going on. Yeah. I beam multi-tool. So this one specifically has its own little, uh, stuff. Yeah. And I think we can see, you know, and obviously this is something I'm not familiar with too much, but, uh, maybe this one could do, we could see it's got 1200 reviews. Um, all right. And this one here, crank brothers. All right. Let's check that one. And this one. So these do seem to be the most appropriate. 
I kind of don't want to necessarily go to page two, um, but we might need to if we're not finding a lot of stuff here. Basically, the idea is we want to find uh, similar products that are ranking well, um, but also not just the top five or 10. We want to also go down to the bottom of page one and see what else is down there that might be, you know, if it fits the category of product that you're searching, um, we want to, you know, pick something like that because they might have less reviews, they might have, you know, less uh, ranking, but they're still going to be appropriate and might have some good keywords in there. They could be, you know, uh, new people on the market, but they've done their research and they know their, their stuff. So uh, let's just go ahead and take these uh, few that we have. I'm just going to grab the uh, ASIN up here. If you just double click on that funky group of letters there, that's the, uh, the ASIN. And I'll just plop them in here. By the way, that's an official term, funky group of letters for an ASIN. Yep. And plop is also yeah. key. Okay, grab that one, throw it in. And this one. And this one. Now, Mark, anyone who's familiar with MBS might be wondering why you're not also just using the, the drop down. Yeah. Yeah. So in, in this process, I want to make sure that I'm, I'm, I'm doing it manually because I want to make sure that I'm grabbing the top and the bottom people. I'm going after the, the top, you know, three or four, and then a couple from the bottom, because I want to make sure that I'm not just, um, just singling my singling myself out and I want to do it manually. This tool does help you by showing you similar products that are in that category. We can kind of see when I did that research, it's already also, this is uh, one of yeah, the products that I picked. It, it already shows me that, that it, it's kind of, it's trying to emulate my manual process that I just did. And so sometimes it will, it will be on point, but sometimes other stuff will show up. Right. So then is it that you're going for a specific number of them? Because I'm also thinking if these guys are doing a bunch, like they're doing a large volume, they probably want to try and stick with the drop down. Can, can, do you think you could get the same results you're looking for doing it that way? You're going to get similar ones. Okay. Absolutely. If you um, do it manually one or two times, just you kind of get the gist yeah. of it. And okay, then smart. you can uh, click the drop down. I'm not familiar with this uh, set of products. Yeah. So I just, I didn't, I didn't know um, if, if these results would be accurate, uh, accurate. So, um, but yeah, so you could, you know, after doing it a couple of times, or you know what that product is, you'd be able to go, okay, yeah, that makes sense. Boom, boom, boom. Um, so we're going to be adding other things in here that will show you the review count and whatnot. So you can actually get a more of an accurate view compared to, you know, doing it manually. Right. So then I guess the takeaway on that is that you really want to make sure that you're really nailing similar products. Yeah. And, and if your familiarity is very high on that type of product, then it's easier. But if it's not, then you should probably go through and ensure you grab exactly. that common. Yeah. Okay. Great. Yep. That, that manual search to make sure you're finding the common commonality points. Perfect. So in this case, now I'm going to click on find keywords. Let that run for a second. What that's going to do is now, instead of just checking, so these keywords that we saw earlier, these are all keywords that were showing up for this first product here, the, the blue, the one highlighted in blue. And that shows us where that product is ranking um, and you know that it's showing up for those keywords. But now we've added in these other products and the system is now pulling any and all keywords that those other products are ranking for. And we're going to be able to see, do we have some of these competitors that are showing up um, uh, better for certain keywords? And are there more keywords that are showing up that we should be showing up for? Right. So as an example now, it's a perfect example here, right? So we, before we had uh, 800 uh, as the first one, and then we had 16,000 as the next one. And we can see that first ASIN position, 194. And then on 16, we have 19 right here. So we know that this product, this first product that we uh, searched, it's showing up, it's showing up, but it's not showing up for all these. Now we can then evaluate, okay, bike accessories, uh, bicycle accessories, mountain bike accessories, uh, BMX bike, and then tool. So these three here, really good keywords. He's not showing up for them. Maybe he doesn't have those in his title, his bullet points, his back end description. He doesn't have it somewhere in his listing. So he's not showing up for it. Or he does, and he just has horrible ranking on it, and he's beyond page 20, which would show that you know he's beyond 400 here. So this is a very easy uh, way to go, okay, these are keywords that he does not have in his uh, listing, or he's not ranking for them. And if you then present that to him, say, hey, look, you know, I have a way of getting you to show up for these other keywords that have a high search volume that you're not showing up for, you're not visible for. 
um, and I can help you get there. That could be a good key point to, to help that person go, oh man, this guy knows what he's doing. Um, that could, that could, you know, getting up onto page one or page two for this keyword could double or triple the amount of sales he's getting. So, um, that's the first aspect of the trifecta. I think I want to uh, pause there and just see if there's any questions on this process or, uh, on the tool or anything like that. So I'm not seeing any immediately. Um, but here, while I'm talking, I'm sure someone's going to kick in with a question. <laughs> that's usually the way it goes, but you know, we've also been pretty, I've asked a couple questions for you guys. <laughs> so I think bar anyone texting in something in the next second, I think we're good to keep going on. Okay. Yeah. Rock and roll. Perfect. <clears throat> so the, the second point is now that you have this information and you can do your presentation to the person, uh, you could also take it a step further and um, not only, so let's say you, you, you've done your research and you go, okay, this is something that I definitely want to do. And you want to, you know, uh, persist on getting that person to, to get you the product or whatever, or you want to have a, maybe a, a more complete package that you can send this person. The next thing you can do is um, use the keyword tracker tool. So uh, that's this tool I showed you earlier where you have your products, uh, you're, you're tracking your products here. You have keywords that you're tracking here. You see the search volume in, uh, right here, uh, the, the search frequency rank, and then you have a very clear ranking system. Um, so this is basically um, green is page one, yellow is page two, uh, orange is page three. You can customize these colors uh, however you like, but this just gives you a very clear snapshot of where are you ranking for these uh, different keywords? And in this particular example, uh, we did plastic whiskey glasses. This is not one of the products that's inside of this Manage by Stats account. This is just a competitor that I'm tracking. I'm tracking where he's ranking on all these keywords, uh, the same keywords that I'm tracking for my product. Pardon me. So here I can go, if I plugged in that bike accessory tool and started tracking, um, you know, let's say the top, 25, 50 keywords in here that made sense for that product, I could then see where are his competitors uh, ranking. I can put in his product. I can put in, you know, maybe one or two of the top competitors tracking those same keywords. And I can see, okay, over time, how is the, how is his ranking going? And let's say you do your research, you're, you're reaching out to the guy. He takes, you know, a few days to get back to you. You have some back and forth communication or whatever, and you have now a week worth of data. This is going to be good ammunition. You can say, Hey, you know, I can see that your competitors is starting to move up the ranks on blah keyword. And, you know, this is a very valuable keyword to you, uh, to your product. And I have ways that I can help you get better ranking on these uh, keywords. So hey, Mark, this is so the we've, second. We've got a question here. Yeah. Uh, Timothy's question. Yeah. Do you want to cover it? Yeah, sure. Uh, so Timothy's saying, uh, so it is comparing the ASIN that we are looking at because it is the first in the ASIN bar at the top, hence the first ASIN rank. Exactly. So this little blue guy here, the highlighted blue uh, first product. So whatever product you put in here first is going to be the first ASIN position ranking that's shown here. And uh, so in this case, I would take what I like to do is take the product that I'm interested in and then what I'm comparing it with uh, you know, follows, right? So in this case, first ace in position, he's 194. The best ace in position is 194. So he is the best one on that product, on that keyword. Uh, the average ace in position, 359, uh, number of competing products and, and word count, right? So that's what those those columns are. Uh, but as you can see here, bike accessories, he's not, on, not even on page 20. Uh, it's got a high search volume. The best ace in position, one of these competitors is, is in position 60. The average A's in position is 300. Uh, there's a ton of competitors on there. And you can also um, export this as a CSV and you'll have an exact breakdown of which one of these ASINs is you know, the best. It'll show you which one, uh, where each of these is ranking. So you'll get a more detailed breakdown, but this kind of gives you a, a good overview. And um, then you can see, okay, yeah, you know, the best one here, you know, 36, average is 300. So a lot of these guys are averaging 300 here on these other keywords. So he, he likely could get into, um, you know, page five or page seven really easily by adding this uh, keyword to his products or doing a little bit of advertising on them or, um, you know, making it uh, a lot more relevant to his product, uh, to his listing. Perfect. Yeah. I think that that covers that one question. I don't see uh, any follow-up on that from Timothy. So I think we should be good. So why don't you roll back over to Keyword Tracker? Perfect. 
<clears throat> so Timothy says, thanks. So I okay, think we covered perfect. it. <laughs> Sweet. Um, so yeah, so this is where I would kind of add to the package of what you're going to be um, presenting to that person. You're going to say, Hey, look, you know, there's, there's keywords that you uh, are losing rank on, or there's keywords that you're, you're gaining rank on and, you know, ways that you could help that person get a better and better results. So with your knowledge that you're getting from the wholesale formula on how to do this stuff and, and, and how to kind of uh, maneuver the whole Amazon arena, um, you're going to take these tools and have a very easy, fast way of just going, okay, here's the products. This is one I want to go after see what competitor products there are, uh, see what keywords they're actually ranking for, uh, and then have a nice little package where you can, you can communicate something that's going to be a lot more in depth, uh, and a lot more, uh, communicate a lot more reality to that person of like, oh yeah, bike accessories. Why am I not showing up for that? You know, that's, that's crazy. I, you know, I, I would love to, to rank for that keyword. And, uh, and now you have some ammunition that gets them to go, oh man, this guy knows his stuff. Um, yeah, I'd like to make him an authorized seller. And, you know, then you can work towards getting to be the, the only seller for that product. Yeah. And, and I think, and I've had a couple conversations with Dylan about this because there's obviously the first point of good, I'm trying to find someone who will let me be a distributor, but then you want to also have, you're shooting for obviously getting that exclusivity. So you have, you're the only one who's allowed to distribute this product. So I'm going to let you, you guys have studied that content and have lived that content more than we have. So here's the reason I'm saying that you're going to know the trifecta, the trifecta definitely covers more information than you would use just to find and secure a, you know, a permission to distribute at a certain point, it's going to transition from okay to distribute or I'm landing a deal to okay to distribute to I'm exclusively distributing this because I'll give you an example. Dylan probably talks a lot about the different brands that he has exclusivity with him. He and I talked about a number of them and obviously I'm not going to give details because I don't know how much he, <laughs> he shares and they're his brands that he's running. But his, the point is that we've even had conversations about, you know, diving in with PPC agency and, you know, a much more hyper aggressive level of managing on PPC. So once you get to that other end of the spectrum where you have nailed a contract with a company and maybe you have exclusivity for two years, three years or something like that in that time period, yeah, sure. You might be exclusive, but when you get to the end of that exclusivity period, you want to make sure that they re-sign that contract with you. So that's where some of these later parts come in a lot more. You want to make sure once you've nailed that contract that you keep that contract. And that's where, if you understand the full trifecta, it's really going to help you a lot more. Yep, absolutely. And that kind of ties right into the, the third point um, of the trifecta, which is even, even if you have just the, the, uh, you're, you're an improved seller and there's other sellers selling that product, right? You're, you're sharing the buy box uh, for when people are uh, buying that product, right? So you share the buy box uh, um, price with those other people. But uh, if you as a seller from, from your seller account advertise that product, you're going to be advertising when you have the buy box and you can advertise certain keywords to get him better ranking for that keyword during your time. And so during the time that you have the buy box, right? So, and the advertising module uh, in, in Seller Central will automatically turn on and off your, your campaign uh, when, you, when you have the buy box and when you don't have the buy box, right? So if you are, if you know there's a keyword that he's not ranking for and that he should be ranking for, you can then put that in your own advertising to get you more sales. And you, you'd want to do that obviously on a smart basis. You don't want to just go after the top keyword, you know, um, uh, tools, you know, that, that wouldn't make sense. Or, um, if we look back in here, uh, well now in, in Mark, I yeah. think we're now getting into the part where we're assuming a lot because yeah. here we've had people go, and I'm sure some of you on here have gone through amazing selling machine or search, find buy, or some other great course. And what happens that we've observed is this part gets lost or this part gets fuzzy. So the statement of don't necessarily have your first target be that top performing keyword. Let's dive into why, because that might be a very key thing to clarify. Absolutely. Um, so the reason, first off, I guess it kind of goes back to why we call it the trifecta. 
if you're going to be doing advertising on a product and you, you know, you want to get that product to uh, get more exposure and get more ranking, you want to do it in a very smart manner. There's a lot of ways or methods to do that. Um, having your research done of what keywords are appropriate to your product and what keywords have the good search frequency rank, this, the, this search volume here, um, you're going to know, okay, these are the ones that you should be ranking for. But if you are not ranking for them, your when you do advertising on those keywords, it's going to be very expensive. Um, Amazon is a bidding system uh, on their uh, advertising console. So if you don't have good ranking, if you can see here that you're not even on page uh, 20 for this keyword, and you go and, and try to bid you know, aggressively or as aggressive as other people that are bidding on that keyword, your cost per click, what you're spending to get someone to click on your ad to buy the product is going to be higher because you don't have that ranking. And that's a little, um, little known secret or little known point where, yeah, you can just take the top 20 keywords and pound some promotion on them, but it's going to be a lot more expensive to do that. And it could take longer too, because you're, you're fighting an uphill battle you're fighting against people who are already ranking really well for those keywords. And so their cost per click is even lower. So they're, they're bidding just as aggressively as you are, but they're still winning because they have better ranking. So the, the thought process on this is that you've done your research, you found your keywords, you put them into a keyword tracker. So you know where you're ranking on them. And then from there you can go, okay, good. This one here, let's just go back to the, these whiskey glasses product, right? Whiskey glasses, I'm you know on and off of page three and page two here. This one um, is a very competitive keyword. It's 4,000 uh, search frequency rank. So it's got a very low number compared to the top million, right? If I were to just go after this really aggressively, okay, I might do okay since I'm already showing up on page two and page three. Um, but if I go down and go, okay, let's look at, whiskey glasses. Let's just do a search here. Whiskey glasses. You can see if it shows up in any other long tail versions. It looks like it doesn't. We have whiskey glass set, uh, bourbon glasses, plastic cocktail glasses, rock glasses. So I probably wouldn't want to necessarily have this keyword as the one that I want to push aggressively on because it's very competitive. I can see that my ranking is kind of going down right here. Uh, if this was the product that I wanted to go after, you can see that the ranking is kind of going down on this. So I wouldn't want to go after this long, this uh, very competitive keyword. I would go after something that's maybe closer in towards a hundred thousand or, or even higher. If we look at uh, this other product here, I think I've added some other stuff in here. Yeah. So here I've gone down to uh, almost a million and this is, this is one of the products in my brands. And um, so I would then look, okay, whiskey glasses. Is there any other uh, long tail versions of whiskey glasses? Looks like there's three plastic whiskey glasses and the main whiskey glasses. Yeah. Whiskey glasses. Yeah. And I guess that's it. Oh, cause it's over here as well. Right. <laughs> so yeah. So you could go, okay. Um, look at this. I'm on page one for plastic whiskey glasses. And if you had this tracking, like let's say you decided to, to reach out to this, uh, to the owner of this product and you wanted to start that conversation, start tracking it on that, on that day. So that by the time you get some communication back and forth, you have a couple days of, of ranking here. You can actually see where that person is showing up. And then you can go, okay, good. He's showing up great, you know, awesome for, for this long tail version of it. And if we wanted to rank for this one, you can see I'm blipping on and off of page three uh, uh, up here or page two, that is. And down here, I'm solidly on page one. So you can push really aggressively on this to get even higher or go after some other variation. So this is where the, the, the connection of those three points comes into play. You find the, the appropriate keywords, you make sure you see where you're tracking on them, where you're actually ranking for them. And then you pick certain keywords from that knowledge of where you're ranking on those and go after those in your advertising so that you, when you're spending money to push yourself up the ranks, you're spending it in a wise manner. You're not just throwing money at the, at the, at the wall and hoping that you're going to get some sales. Yeah. And the other element of this is obviously at a certain point, if you're able to, you're, you're trying to influence also the you know, bullet points, description, title, 
especially if they've got errors in that area, then that's where you can drag these keywords and incorporate them in there. And that's kind of a, another big chunk of the trifecta too. <clears throat> Absolutely. Cause it's sort of like most people, at least what we've found, and, and I'm not talking just FBA, I'm talking all over the place or not just um, private label, but all over the, the area on this, they assume good, these words are in the listing or they should be in my listing. So therefore I should be advertising for them, but it, it's not, you can't, you can't blow your entire budget all at once. Exactly. Uh, if you go back to my screen share, um, that's you're already on it. Yeah. Okay, perfect. That's a key point. So let's say, let's say this is the, the, the product that you wanted to do. I, I just happen to have this in my, uh, account kind of preloaded from research I did before. Um, all these, all these keywords here are appropriate keywords for the product. And we can see that, you know, the, the listing itself, let's say this was the, the person's listing that you wanted to propose, um, uh, to, um, you can see that there are, he has some of these keywords in here, but he also doesn't have, uh, some of them in here at all. And this is a key point where you can go once, let's say once the person has agreed to have you on as a seller, uh, you could then do some work, some work in here and get these other keywords put into his listing and say, Hey, look, if we, if we add this keyword in your title or add these keywords into your bullet points, we're going to get, you're going to, you're going to now show up for these other keywords. Whereas before you weren't even showing up for them. And now you have an even more kind of, you know, complete package. I wouldn't necessarily do this step um, before the person has, you know, uh, agreed to take you on or whatever, yeah. because then you might just, just be hand it right yeah, on. Hand over, it right yeah. over. Right. <laughs> But there's some value. Hopefully you like it. Right. And this will just help you in, in what you're doing with them. So you can go, okay, look, uh, I, I can build all these other keywords in here and that's going to get you a lot more ranking, a lot more exposure. And, uh, and that's, that's going to increase your sales. So, um, this is all tied into that, that exclusivity point where you can show him that what you're doing is, is so valuable that he goes, Oh man, I, this guy should just be the only one doing it. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And especially so, so <laughs> I, this is my third time laughing at the comment I'm reading from Sarah. So Sarah very aptly describes this. She says, so kind of like a frog in a frying pan, we gradually work up and it's cheaper than trying to instantly reach boiling slash number one. Exactly. That's the perfect way to look at it. You I know? It. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Gradually boil your frog to death. Um, and then Timothy mentions, um, so if you're at, so if, if you advertised for whiskey, whiskey glasses, do both plastic, plastic, oh my God, I can't speak right now. Plastic whiskey glasses and plastic whiskey glasses get hits for the advertising. Yeah. So I, I get what he's saying. So, yeah, yeah. so if you're, you mean, even though I can't is, speak. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this is where, um, your kind of, uh, insight into how to do advertising, uh, comes in. So, uh, if you haven't done any kind of training on that, I advise you look around and get some training on that. Or if that's inside of the wholesale formula, then great, uh, uh, do, do some learning on, uh, how to do, um, advertising. But the, the main thing would be like, so if we go back to this keyword tracker, right? So if I were to advertise on whiskey glasses, there's three different ways you can advertise on whiskey glasses. You can say anyone who types in that exact keyword or anyone who types in that keyword um, in, in addition to other keywords as a phrase. And then you can also just do broad where anyone who types in anything that contains whiskey or glasses. Um, so when you're going to do a kind of a, a pushing exposure or trying to get exposure on a certain keyword, uh, the two best ways to do it are exact and phrase match targeting. So whiskey glasses as an exact phrase. So someone, someone would have to type in that exact phrase. Uh, and then as a, a, a phrase match, it would be um, whiskey glasses, but it could be glasses whiskey or plastic whiskey glasses or any other variation as long as it had whiskey glasses in it it would be a phrase so yeah so if you targeted whiskey glasses you would then be showing up for plastic whiskey glasses and any other thing that had whiskey glass in it um so that's that's a thing to think about right so if i were to just go after whiskey glasses I'm, I'm blipping on and off on on page two here it looks like and some days i'm going kind of high so it's you can see the volatility in this little graph here, right? Um, so I wouldn't want to necessarily pound on this keyword initially. I would I would go after more this one down here, and I would do exact phrase or exact match 
um, plastic whiskey glasses. So I'm going after that exact one. And when you do that, the fact that it has whiskey glasses in it is now going to help you rank for whiskey glasses higher up without having to spend money on that primary keyword. You're going after what's called the long tail version of that keyword, spending money on that because you have some kind of ranking on it. You actually are showing up. Amazon knows you're relevant. Customers know you're relevant. You're getting conversions on it. And that's what helps you get this ranking here. So doing that, you're going to be targeting it smartly. You're not going to just be throwing money at the wall. Whereas going up here and just going after, you know, apartment essentials for first time apartment owners or something like that. I mean, I'm just going to be throwing money at the wall and, yeah. and, and not showing up, uh, drinking glasses, same thing. It's, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, on page seven or eight or whatever this is. And I'm going to waste money by, by trying to rank for it right now. Yeah. And it's kind of like, it's sort of, it depends on who you are in the sense of like, let's say you have a near unlimited budget. Let's say this is, let's say you're, let's look at it this way. Let's say you're private label, and this is not your first successful product. You've had a whole brand, super successful, sold it. You've got a million dollars to jump into a product. Then yeah, sure. You can throw money at the wall and you will stick because you can play with the big dogs there. But more than likely, especially if you're going after a wholesale account, or especially if you're starting, let's say a private label brand, and this is your first rodeo, the whole idea is not to go, you're not trying to get every single keyword possible to page one as your first cycle, as your first thing you're attacking. You're taking your things that are on page two, getting them yep. to page <clears throat> one, get or getting them from the bottom of page two, two to the top of page two, or getting things that are at the top of page two onto the bottom of page one, or things that are on three to two. It's just that kind of like move everything a little bit up and you'll slowly creep the sales up all across the boards. And then you'll start to be able to have the money to go after yep. page one targets. And, and there's, there's, uh, quite a bit of an intuitiveness uh, that comes in to play after you've you've kind of massaged these numbers uh, for a while. Going back to this, uh, these bike accessories, bicycle accessories, mountain bike accessories. We look at this and we go, wait a minute. The average ace in position, most of these guys are in the three hundreds. That means most of them for these keywords. What's that? 18, 17. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. They're, they're so far from. Paying. Yeah. So either there's some other products that are showing up better for those keywords, which could make sense. Maybe there's, you know, um, the, the pedals or the brakes or the seats yeah, or clips, or, clips yeah. other things that, that come into play that could be, you know, just more appropriate or more um, popular for those kind of uh, keywords. But nonetheless, most of these guys are showing up in the, in the 300s. So you can go, okay, wait a minute. If I'm not showing up at all, if this person's product is not showing up at all, I could do some advertising on these check these in keyword tracker first and see if it makes sense to go after them. Um, so you can kind of play with those things, but you, you need to look at all three aspects. Do you have the, the, those keywords in your listing? Um, are you in, in quote unquote SEO for those right, keywords? Yeah. And, and or then the, the PPC ready kind of phrase. Right. Yep. And then, and then are you actually ranking for any of those keywords? And you might see some, some, you know, um, little pockets where you can go, oh man, this might be a, something, uh, a great thing to go after because you could check um, using this tool here, you can check, okay, most of the, the competitors are showing up very, very far on the page. And so there could be a, a, an area where you could dive into, um, you know, maybe one of these keywords that's very, very, very applicable. Most of the people are showing up on page, you know, 15, 16, 17, and it could be an easy area for you to jump into. Um, but again, you want to just make sure that you're not going to go after something that just, you know, you don't have ranking for, and it doesn't make sense that you'd actually, um, bid aggressively on it. So you use those three aspects together to smartly go about, right. uh, ranking that product. Yeah, exactly. So there's, you know, there's a couple of things here that people, people are bringing up, which is, um, uh, will there be a replay? Um, yes, we will definitely have a replay. We'll send it out to you. But the question that that makes me wonder, and I'd love to see what you guys say on this, um, we're covering different aspects here. What is the aspect for you guys that you're like, oh, whoa, I'm having to like wrap my head around that. And that's a new concept where maybe we need to go because we. it's not like this has been a crazy long webinar so far. How far into this thing are we? It doesn't have a timestamp. My goodness, what is Zoom even about useful 50, for? 50 minutes in. 
we, we could, can keep this short for you guys for sure. But at the same time, is there some aspect of this that you're like, I need more information about that one subject matter. So go ahead and uh, add any comments there. Um, and then I know, I know that we've, so on our side, we've, we've dealt with a lot of this stuff because, you know, we've got a whole company that does nothing but Amazon all day long. And we also have a PPC agency. So we've had to, over the years, obviously we've built up as sellers, this, you know, understanding of how to do this, but m very professionally, very, very professionally in the last couple of years. So the key that you, you should think with there is you're looking for the, the keywords that are going to make you money. Right. That is like that. We have that phrase, the money making <clears throat> keywords. Um, so Sarah's mentioning um, that PPC is new, uh, a newer topic for you guys here. Why don't you actually also tell me um, how does what depth does the wholesale formula cover in their courses? Um, Lauren, I'm just call them. OK, this is actually a question that will that I'll ask you in a second. But um, how deep does the wholesale formula cover on some of this stuff? Because we're happy to help um, add the more advanced side of this for you guys. So you just let us know and we'll dive into that in future webinars. Yeah. Um, now, Courtney is asking, uh, if I'm understanding you correctly, the lower the number in each column represents the more competitive the word is? Um, correct. The lower the number, so it's a, a ranking system. So number one is going to be the best. And that means that it has the, the higher search volume. Um, give you a little bit of history on that. Amazon used to have a search volume database where right. they, they showed you, you know, or, or you could get the, the actual search volume for those keywords. Um, and you know, Amazon likes to make things complicated. So they stopped doing that and they now switch it over to a popularity system. And it's basically a rank system where number one is going to be, you know, the top. Uh, it's going to be the, the highest search volume. And, you know, as an example, you know, these poppet toys, those are like number three right now on, on the, on the top million search terms, everyone's buying them for their kids and whatnot. Right. Um, so it's just, it's a, it's a popularity point, but it's, it's really just search volume. If you come, you know, break it down, it's, it's number one is the highest searched word. Uh, and then all the way down to, you know, a million is you know, the millionth is the, you know, the lowest searched term, but it's, it's of the top million. So there's a bunch of other terms, you know, beyond that. So, uh, yeah, so that you're going to want to, when you sort this, you're going to want to sort it by, you know, lowest number on top, which means it has the highest search volume. Right. And then the first ace in position, best ace in position, that's literally, so number one would be the number one. Right. Yeah. So on here, just in case. Yeah. So on that, exactly. So, so if you did, you know, bike, uh, bike multi-tool. So this one here, this is number one, number two, number three, number four. Right. You skip over the ads. Those are all ads. Yep. Ads, ads, ads. Number five, six, seven, eight. You know, so these is this is the position um, on the page, and that's what that's referring to. Uh, best ASIN position, first ASIN position, average ASIN position. Exactly. So um, I'm sure that that answers that. Um, oh, okay, interesting. This is this is good for us to know. So I I realize some of you are actually not fully through the course. So. Um, yeah, so that's something we'd be interested in getting your feedback on later. And I'll, I'll also check with Dylan um, on what are some good supplementary content pieces, because uh, one of you guys are mentioning that some of you are only on module three or module four or something like that. So um, yeah, I'd be happy to, um, we'd be happy to provide anything that we can that kind of helps you guys in that journey. Um, and also, cause I know that some of you are not just doing wholesale or not just doing private label, but you're using them to kind of help each other. So in that respect, there's also strategies where, you know, the private label expertise of this guy, you know, definitely help, but you know, they, it's all, here's another way to look at this. Okay. Um, especially for you guys that are, I guess, coming into this newly, um, there is a tendency out there and it's a mistake to think that you're fighting against Amazon because some people think, oh, Amazon shut this down and Amazon makes it so hard. In some respects, that might be true. It, it might be that Amazon is making things hard, but the, their job at the end of the day and the 
only thing they care about is to one, stay in business and two, make more money as Amazon. Not to make you more money, but to make more money. Yep. So the way to, the, the thing to think with on this is any change, even I'm sure there is a very rational reason for them to switch to search frequency rank from search volume. In some way, it probably gives a more accurate way of viewing kind of some of these things. There, there's, they're always doing things to improve their sales. So the better your strategy aligns with what Amazon wants, the fewer roadblocks that Amazon puts in your way. So the, and that's the least amount of headaches possible is yeah. probably also. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot want. of different things that, that can go wrong. And so definitely, you know, doing this, uh, doing a course with someone who's gone through all the headaches and kind of shows you the best way to go about it is definitely the way to go. Uh, which is, you know, why you guys all made the right decision on that. Um, you know, learn from, from the experience that, you know, someone who's gone through all the different things and kind of, you know, gone through the maze of avoiding or having to go through the mistakes uh, that they, you know, could, could slow or be very painful. Very painful. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. So then Dana's asking, when you were talking about the search frequency rank, is that by category or entire catalog? This is going to be the entire catalog. So this is literally... Um, you know, if we did, um, uh, see if we can even do it here. Let's do a, let's go look for poppets. Yeah, there you go. Poppets or 20 years ago, it would have been Furbies or okay, are they called always Pokemon cards. Poppets. These are going to be at the top. Poppet fidget toys. Probably not poo it. <laughs> Pop it. There we go. Pop it. It's probably just pop it. Let's just grab one of these guys and see if they show up. So the pop middle. fidget. There we go. Fidget. Let's so, but we'll see here. this here. We'll see kind of like what we're dealing with. Yep. Just reset this tool and we'll pop it in there and do a little, little search to see, uh, see what comes up. But yeah, it's going to be, um, this is, uh, the top million search terms. So, um, it's uh, it's not by category. It's it's literally the top million, and the top million is the top million that covers yeah. all the different categories. Um, and you know, each category will be in a a higher or lower level compared with the other one. And the search terms are going to kind of line up with that. So, um, yeah. So it, it, you will we'll be able to see here. Let's see if it uh, shows up. And then. Um... Also the mention love more training, love to have more training on PPC. Um, that is fully, fully understood. Um, we can do a lot more training on that kind of stuff. The other thing there that um, we have as a PPC course, if you go, uh, Danny, why don't you put the URL in there for everyone? And then also include that. Um, I know, I know we technically only had it for the event, but let's give these guys the, uh, the coupon code for that. So it takes it from 250 as a course down to 97. Um, we have a, we have a PPC course. It's like a six module course. Um, and we dive very deep into really a, like everything that you could need to know on PPC, but starting, sorry, starting from the very most basic fundamental all the way up to getting into strategies and really how do you attack it so that course could be something that would be um great for you guys perfect danan threw that in there and then i think it was danan was it prosper 2021 i think was the coupon code i'm gonna check that i don't want them to have to pay that, that yeah i don't want them to have to pay expiration so i'm gonna see oh then have. make a new make a new uh coupon code really quick because i i'd like these guys to not have to pay the full price for that course um i'm sure yeah. Um, yeah. So we're going to make a coupon code for you guys really quick. Yeah. Go ahead and make it no, getting perfect. Yeah. Um, why don't we do that really quick though? So we don't forget. And then we'll, we'll put it in the chat, a coupon code to cut the course down a lot in cost. Yeah. It, it's a, it's a, such a key point. I mean, um, a lot of, um, uh, private label sellers definitely need, need to know PPC. Um, but we're finding more and more that you know, wholesale type sellers, um, if you do PPC very smartly, when you have the buy box, you can be getting some awesome results because most, most wholesale people that I know, um, don't do PPC. 
it's, you know, it's, it's a brand that already has its own recognition. It's already got exposure because of the brand name or because of the type of product or whatever it is. And so they don't need to do PPC, right? And while that's true, that's fine. You're going to rake in some of those sales. If you did a little bit of PPC to push smartly on certain keywords, you could be getting, you can take, take that, that overall volume higher and higher and higher. And then boom, if you get exclusivity, now you're getting all those sales mm -hmm, uh, right. to you and, 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 and to the, uh, the primary seller. So uh, that's just a, it's, it's very important to get the basics and, and this, um, the PPC course gives you that. It gives you a real clear understanding of how PPC works and why it works and how, how to do everything. Um, and uh, yeah, so if you go back to the screen share, I just pulled this up. You can see here, pop it is number three. Yeah, there you go. So it's it's the third most popular thing go. searched for on yep. Amazon right now. Yeah. So that's what that's going to give you. It, it it's all categories, all products. Um, yeah. Top. Or just come up with the next pop it. If you do, you know, I'm happy to go into business with you. <laughs> Curtis, you want to do this course for 97? Is that what you said? Uh, let's make it 75. I know sure. that that's like a serious, crazy discount that we actually haven't offered anyone, but um, yeah. Dylan's awesome, by the way. I, your guys' audience, like Dylan's audience, you guys who are doing wholesale, um, I've had the, the opportunity to hang out with some of you guys and talk a lot with Dylan, and I absolutely love working with you guys. So, um, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm buttering you up, but it's not for any lack of reason. I, I just, uh, yeah, I like working with you guys, and I know that. Here's the thing. For private labor label, like Mark was saying, PPC is absolutely essential for you guys. I know that it's like a, it's a booster. It's not, you know, strategy number one. So, um, yeah, I hope that that kind of helps it make uh, that course maybe more approachable as something you can do, and then um, you have it that it can add to your repertoire. So yep. that's that's what I'm thinking. Yep. So that's basically the main points of the trifecta as it relates to the wholesale formula. Um, and, you know, I, obviously I don't know the wholesale formula as, as well as you guys do, or as well as you guys are learning right now. Um, so we'll, t we'll obviously talk with Dylan to see if there's other points uh, of tools that we have that we just aren't thinking with that relate to the process that you guys are going through. But, um, yeah, I think this is, this is all, uh, uh, very easy and you get access to all these tools in, uh, when you sign up uh, right. through the wholesale formula. So, you know, this is all, uh, you know, you don't just have to use retriever and, and do that step. You, you, that's of course the most vital step to, right. to do, but you then have these other tools that you can layer on top of your presentation and, and what you're doing to, to get those, uh, contracts. Yeah. And, um, I'm sure if you guys go back in your emails to even just last week, one week ago, if you guys are not already signed up for managed by stats, Dylan does, I, you know, I don't know if the promo code is still live for that one. Um, if you guys run into any problems on that, shoot us an email at support at managed by stats.com and we'll definitely get you taken care of. Um, we want you guys to do well with this stuff. So anything that, um, yeah. Okay. Good. Code is live now. Okay. Perfect. Oh yeah. Um, wait, sorry. So, I, I didn't hit oh. done. So I saved, okay. but didn't hit done. So <laughs> now go ahead and refresh the page. Code should be good. Perfect. Yeah. So, um, that's, so sign up for starter. Uh, some people are making the mistake of, um, even if they have a professional seller account, let's say for some account that they are managing, maybe they have exclusivity on one account or they have their own private label brand. If you are literally only trying to sign up for retriever, Make sure you use Starter because Starter is only $25 a month, whereas Pro is $89 a month while it gives you way more tools and way more that you need as someone who is dealing with advertising, dealing with understanding metrics, finances, all of that stuff. Pro is amazing for that purpose. But the thing to think with on that is if you're only doing it for landing an account, save yourself the money, just sign up for Starter. So that's that. Um, he put the link in there. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Mark just put the, the, the page in there. And then do you remember what the coupon code was? Um, TWF 30 free. Yep. Hopefully Dylan doesn't kill TWF me. For free. That you guys. I think, <laughs> um, and I think it's still active until the 21st. So you guys got two more days to sign up yep. with that thing. He's, he's not going to care that I gave that to yeah. you. Yeah. But, um, yeah, so you've got 
here, let me put that in for everyone. Did, so, put, and I'm going to so clarify. Everyone knows, uh, I put an expiration date of the end of the month on that TWF code, just because we, obviously we cannot have that code going out to yeah. everybody. So there is a hard date. Page four, signing up for MBS. So I'm clarifying in here. So guys, pay attention in the comments, TWF 30 free. Is that still all caps? I don't think it has to be, right? Yeah, it shouldn't have to be. Now. It shouldn't have to be all caps. I know we ran into that earlier, but um, if it is, just try doing all caps. But that'll get you guys one month free of MBS, that TWF 30 free. And then the TWF code that Danin put in will get you the PPC course for 75 bucks as opposed to 250. Um, so there you go. Um, I, I think that this is a great place to cut it anyways, yeah. because I don't necessarily want to, we don't want to give you so much information that you just sit there mouth agape and do nothing. So we'll, we'll give you this, we'll send out the replay to everyone who's registered. So you'll have that for sure. Um, that way you can watch it as many times over as you want. We'll probably just throw it up on YouTube. Yeah. We'll, we'll throw it up on our YouTube channel, hop over to YouTube, uh, managed by stats, one word. We're having and, a um, code uh, issue right now. Oh, okay. I'm going to, we'll stay on here until that, that's, that is fixed. Yeah. Um, but here, so on, on uh, YouTube, so go YouTube managed by stats and just subscribe because the content that we put out there is, is going to be highly applicable sometimes. Yeah, sure. We're, we're constructing some videos for private label guys, but realize that a lot of that stuff, at least when it comes to optimizing, when it comes to PPC, when it comes to keywords, tracking, search, a reverse ACE, and all of those things are highly applicable to you guys if you kind of like look through that. So yeah, and a key point on that is if you get exclusivity, you basically are private label. Yeah, yeah. So if you can get that contract where you have exclusivity, a lot of the content and tools inside of Managed by Stats are going to give you uh, a lot more uh, oomph to what you're doing there. Perfect. Mary, you're saying code is not working. I refresh, tried caps and not caps. Which which code? The code for the wholesale TWF. formula? The TWF. Let me just make sure she's not saying. Mark, do you want to try setting up a test on yeah. that one just to make sure really quick? TWF. Okay. Okay, fine. Keep getting the invalid coupon message. Yeah. So I am don't worry, guys. We're going to stay on here until we we have this all sorted out for you. Because you know, <clears throat> why not? Why not? All right. Exactly. Okay. Oh, the other thing that I'd be really interested in, guys, I'm going to put it in the link here. We're doing a top to bottom refresh of our user interface. So I would be very interested in getting your guys' take because um, we know that our user interface is a little bit dated, but we are handling that literally as we speak. So here, let me just um, pull up that. If you guys want to take 30 seconds and vote on this, we would very much like your perspective on which of these user interfaces looks best to you. So here, I am literally pasting that in here right now. I just I think uh, I am. Sounds like you're trying to. I just <laughs> tested the TWF 30 free. Uh, I did it as all caps and it worked, it worked. Um, just I, fine for me. She mentioned that it was the other one. Okay, that it perfect. was for the course. So what I just put in there, guys, is the course is 75 is what was giving me problems. Yeah, Sarah, we're, we're going to solve that right now. So I just plopped in there um, just a design contest that we're running. If, if you're, if you have just 10 seconds, just star rate, whichever one you like the most. Um, if you want to leave comments on each of them, we'd be happy to have it. But um, yeah, we're, the thing is we have, I know that right now we have the four point check in retriever. Dylan and I are talking about a 21 point check, right? Which I know is a chunk. And then we're also talking about a number of other things that we are going to be putting together for you guys in the future. So um, that's why, that's why I care uh, about, you know, like what you guys think in terms of the design and that you guys have a chance to really be successful because we are definitely going to be putting a, a, a good chunk of effort into building things out for the wholesale formula audience. So we want you guys to do well and do well with managed by stats. So, and that's again, where if there's anything that you think of right to support at managed by stats, we would definitely be happy to help with anything possible. Okay. Um, Dana just threw a link in there. Yeah. 
try this link. The, 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 All we need is one person successful. <laughs> yeah, well, it should work now. Um, I had to delete it and do some technical mumbo jumbo. Yeah, exactly. So, but that, that link or the code should work. Okay. Try that, that link right there, guys. Now, while we said, um, you know, we put a, an end date on that code. If you know other TWF guys, we're, 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 I'm very happy to have that. Yes, it's working. Perfect. Um, go ahead. And if you guys even have little TWF chat forum stuff, I'm okay with the TWF audience, any and all of you having that, that link and that course available to you at that price. So feel free to spread it. No issue on that at all. Let's see. Let me make sure I didn't make it. Hold me. I'm I'm saying these things and Danan is not reading my mind, Danan. Read my mind. Yes. Ah, no, we'll, we'll take it to I have read your mind and that is just time. fine. <laughs> um, okay, cool. But it's working. So there you go. We'll solve that it uh, it can be spread around like wildfire, no problem. So um for that, I'd say that we're we're a wrap on this one. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Perfect. Okay, guys. So then um this is ranking. If there are specific points on this stuff that you feel like you need more of, we're happy to help. PBC course will definitely help you guys for that. Um, but again, let us know if there's anything that's in areas that we haven't covered that you'd like to hear about. We are more than happy to throw together content for you guys. Um, with that, let's get out of here. We all have things to do. Sounds good. So thank you so much. And um, we will talk to you guys later. Oh, wait, I should probably have it ready so I can end, huh? before I go and say goodbye. Yes, nice to meet you all. Thank you guys for being here. Thank you for being such an awesome audience. And we will talk to you guys.